Hi everyone! I'm going to take you through all the features on the main publish page in Social Flow. Let's get started. Now when you first log into Social Flow, you'll land on the main publish tab here in the navigation. And you'll see we're on the main publish page for this Twitter handle. Over here on the right, you'll see all of your social accounts listed under the different social network icons. So you can easily pick and choose, switch back and forth between the different handles. Now since Social Flow has this proprietary algorithm to monitor and optimize your social media publishing, you'll see a few key data points at the very top of the screen as we're monitoring your audiences. Here at the top, we'll see this chart, this day over day active engagement chart. So the blue line represents today, the gray line represents yesterday. So you can make some day over day comparisons as to how active your audience typically is around certain times of the day. Over here, we track the exact number of followers currently engaging with this handle. So they are followers that are actively clicking, liking, or, or favoriting, retweeting, etc. Over here, we have a list of trending terms. Now, Twitter itself will provide trending topics that sort of encompass all of Twitter. These trending terms in Social Flow will specifically focus on the keywords, hashtags, and at names that your followers are interested in or engaging with. Uh, they may also include uh, keywords, hashtags, and, and topics that other people are tweeting about, but your followers are engaging with them but they can also include keywords and hashtags that you are tweeting about. So you may see things that are familiar um, and related to recent tweets that you've just published. Any of these terms, you can click on them and it'll take you to a Twitter search so you can see how people are uh, using the term or engaging with the, that topic. We also look at top engagers. So these are the f followers for Twitter who are actively engaging the most frequently. Uh, this list will update every two days as we need some time to do the math and tally up all the interactions. The trending terms list and all of the other data points here are in real time. They're updating every few seconds. Now if I switch over to Facebook, you'll see as I click over that the data changes slightly. So again, we're tracking the active engagement, the number of fans actively engaging with your content on Facebook specifically, either in the newsfeed or directly on the page. As you see, it just updated for Facebook. We also look at top engagers here as well, so the fans who are actively uh, clicking, liking, sharing, commenting the most often. And rather than trending topics or stories, we look at your top posts. So out of everything that you've published, what has received the most engagement? We're sorting this list by the comments number, but we are looking at clicks, likes, and shares in the background as well. But this gives us an idea of what tends to do well for your page, what sort of topics uh, tend to perform well, and then we can judge future content based on that. So the idea with SocialFlow, uh, since we have all this real-time information about your fans and your followers, is that you want to build this queue of content here on the left. That way, our system has a, a chance, an opportunity to evaluate everything you want to publish and determine which of the posts or the tweets are more relevant right now, uh, given what we can see about your audience. So each item that gets entered into the queue gets a score. You see this one has an 86. It's a number between 0 and 100, and it's basically a real-time evaluation of that uh, piece of content, comparing it to what the audience is currently engaging with or how active they are. When you have um, many items in the queue, you'll see that uh, the highest scored content floats to the top and the lower scored content floats to the bottom. So that way we're always showing you what's most relevant right now at the top of the screen. And this will change throughout the day. So as certain topics lose steam, other topics become more popular, uh, the items in the queue will continue to be reevaluated and rescored throughout the day and move up and down in the queue accordingly. Now the easiest way to get content into the queue so that we can evaluate it is by using RSS feeds. Any RSS feeds you have on your site or other sites you might share from, you can plug into Social Flow and then every time a new article comes out, we'll get a copy of that in the queue automatically by way of that RSS feed. And RSS feeds have a lot of settings, so you can control how the content publishes from there or if you even want to publish it. Now up at the top, there is a pencil and paper icon. That is our compose box. So once you open that, you have the opportunity to create a new tweet or a new post from scratch. Now I'm actually going to start with Facebook here so you can see all of the features that Facebook offers since there are more. You'll notice here on the left, you've got all of your accounts listed and you can toggle on more than one handle at a time if you prefer. I'm putting in something 
very generic, but just so you see how the Compose box works. Now this is a basic link post for Facebook. So I've entered in some copy and a URL. You'll notice that I use the full version of the URL. You must include the HTTP colon slash slash. We need that beginning piece in order for our, our system to recognize it as a link, and then we will shorten it for you automatically. We will also pull in metadata for that URL automatically using the OG tags the same way that Facebook does. Now, Facebook recently made a change where you need to claim your domain or link ownership in order to edit metadata. So you'll see we don't own google.com. We cannot edit metadata for this link. However, once you set that up on Facebook side uh, with your own domain, we can certainly allow you to edit metadata in social flow. In which case, you'll be able to change the thumbnail, upload a custom thumbnail, change the title or the description here, um, and create your post as you need to. Now down below, we've got a bunch of icons here. The camera will allow you to attach a single photo to create a photo post rather than link post. You can also attach up to five images and create a carousel format where the user will see the image, the first image, and be able to scroll through the carousel. You can also attach a video. When you attach a video, you'll get a separate set of video settings that will be available once the video is attached with a blue film strip icon next to these icons here. Now this play button icon, uh, this is for creating slideshows. So similar to the carousel, you get to upload multiple images. Here you can upload up to seven, just use a plus sign. And then rather than the carousel where the user has to click the arrow through the images, this will play in a slideshow format automatically. And then you can control how quickly you want the slideshow to move. You'll probably recognize this icon. This is the handshake icon or the branded content tool. Uh, here, you can tag a sponsor or a partner of your page. Um, Facebook also recently made a change where we're no longer able to show you a list of all the relevant pages. You have to know the exact page name, so you can either type that in uh, or paste in the facebook.com URL for that page. This tag icon here, this is for labeling, and this is specific to social flow. Your fans will not see this, your followers will not see this. What it does is it allows you to categorize your content into different buckets, and then you can pull a report later to see how different types of content perform. So any label that makes sense for you, you can type it in. I'll use a generic category here, sports. Once you've typed it in, just hit the plus sign, and then it's attached to the message. If you've used the label once, it will be stored in a drop down here, so you can continue to use it over and over again without having to type it in. And you can have multiple labels on any message as you need to. Uh, next to the label is the target icon. And we've copied over basically the same features that Facebook offers with targeting. So you can do interests or pages uh, in this preferred audience tab. And again, with pages, you'll have to know the exact page name or just page in, uh, paste in the page URL. If targeting is something that you're doing frequently, you can always label and save the targeting set so you don't have to keep typing in multiple interests. It'll be available in a dropdown. Now under the restricted tab, here's where you can do geotargeting by location, country, city, or state. There's also an expiration option here if you need a post to be removed from Facebook by a certain date. And Facebook recently made changes limiting some of the other targeting options they used to offer. There's no longer gender or full age range. You can only do a minimum age now. Next to the target icon is the eyeball. This is for creating an unpublished page post or a hidden post. Essentially, it does go live on Facebook, but none of your organic fans will see it. And then some uh, clients might choose to promote that post or, or send it out as an ad unit to a custom audience. Then we get to the publishing options. You'll see that the optimize feature here is the first one in the dropdown. When you optimize, you're allowing our system to basically choose the best time uh, to send that post or that tweet. However, you can still set a window of time that you'd like the message to go out within. So here we've got um, a date selector, date and time selector that you can use. You can set an exact date and time down to the minute if you prefer. Or you can just use this drop down and say give the post three or four hours and the time will fill in automatically here. Now you have another little control feature, must send and can send. This is like setting a priority level in the message. Can send is low priority. Our system's gonna look for the optimal time 
If for some reason we don't see an optimal time to send this post, say the audience isn't very engaged, they're not interested in this topic, with can send, our system has the opportunity to expire the message if we don't see the optimal time. So rather than publish it and waste it on people who are not interested or not going to engage, it will expire the message. Uh, typically, with a long time window, I would say six hours, 12 hours a day, a couple of days, depending on how evergreen the message actually is, the longer the window, the more opportunity our system has to find uh, the optimal time in the audience that's going to engage. So can send is generally better for evergreen type content. Once you uh, click on this and it becomes must send, now the message is high priority. It has to publish no matter what. So our system is still going to look for the optimal time to try and get you the most attention or engagement on this message. But even if we don't see an optimal time, we'll make sure, the system will be sure to publish it by 6.27 p.m. or whatever the last minute is here in the window. Now, must send is a little bit tricky in that it is an override feature. It says it has to publish by that time. So if you use the must send frequently, uh, you want to be sure that the windows, at least the end time here, is staggered by a few minutes for your messages. Otherwise, you could potentially run into an issue where multiple messages publish at the same time. That only happens if this time here is the same on multiple messages. Now, aside from optimizing, you can just publish straight away. Uh, it's great for breaking news. You can still schedule if you need to, set a very specific date and time. And you can also queue things up on hold. So this is sort of like a draft uh, message. It means that it's going to be held in the queue and it will not publish until you come back to it in the queue and make your edits. So down here below, you'll see there's a number of items already in the queue on optimized on must send and their times are staggered here, so we can see they're all very different. Uh, and then we can also sort the boxes here and say turn off the optimized items uh, from view and just see the hold items. So now this is a hold message. It has a different color and a different symbol, and you can make any changes you might want to the copy or the images and then optimize it or schedule it from there. You can still edit items that are already optimized. So even though this is set up for publishing, I can still make changes as long as it's in the queue. Now this gear icon is going to be a shortcut to your settings for this handle. And this is uh, only accessible for admins of the account. But I'm pointing this out because down below uh, there's a set of publishing limits that you can utilize. And uh, any of these sort of configurations work really well with can send content. So if you do have some evergreen content in your queue, uh, it's definitely a good idea to plug in some limits here. You can set a max per day, a max per hour, an overall window of time. Say you only wanted to publish between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. You could set that. And you can even be as specific as how many minutes you want to occur between your posts or between your tweets. Say you want at least uh, five minutes between your tweets, but no more than 30 minutes. Or maybe for Facebook, it's something like 15 minutes and 60 or 120 minutes. Once you set these rules, uh, the system will prioritize your must sends. They will always go out within their window. Uh, they will try to meet the limits for the must sends, but the can sends will always follow these rules. So um, if you have a majority of can send content, they will go out, say, every 15 to 30 minutes or every hour, depending on what you set here, and then the must sends will sort of override and go out as needed. But the system will be smart enough to fill in around the must sends with can sends. Also, since we're here, I'll go ahead and point out uh, there's a pause publishing button. This is sort of an emergency stop button if you need it. Anytime there's an urgent news story, breaking news, or some sort of um, disaster happening in the world, it might be a good time to pause what you have in the queue and either take a break from publishing or send out breaking updates on that, on that news story. So rather than editing everything in the queue, you can just put it on pause. Uh, once you say yes, you want to pause, it will put a big black screen over the queue. It says all publishing is on pause, and there'll be a giant pink button that says resume, so you can go back to regular publishing. Now, if I open the compose box again for Twitter, you'll see there are a few options here. Again, we can type in any content, a URL. As you see, as I type in, the character counter here is counting down from the 280. 
so you can tell if you're getting close to the limit or over. The camera icon will allow you to attach a single photo or up to four images to create the grid design. You can also attach an animated GIF or a video. Now currently with Twitter's API, we're under a um, uh, limitation for videos, 120 seconds or 40 seconds, which is about two minutes, 20 seconds in video. We are working with Twitter to increase that limitation, uh, hopefully up to 10 minutes before the end of the year. The label icon works the same way. Uh, if you have an ads account with Twitter, you can do some very basic geo-targeting. And the eyeball is the same idea. It creates an unpublished tweet that your followers cannot see, but you can then use in a promotion or otherwise. Now everything on the right hand side, these are all live messages, all live tweets that have published. Um, you'll see there's an amplify button here. It will allow you, if you want to, you can connect an ads account and promote a post or a tweet from SocialFlow with some very basic targeting options. It will also highlight in orange on some occasions where a particular post or tweet has performed well above your average, either in terms of the total engagement or the speed of engagement. And so that's a nice visual indicator that might be something you want to send out again or promote. If you expand any of these items on both Twitter or Facebook, anything that has published, you'll see a recycle option. So you can basically reuse that tweet or that post if you want. Now it copies it back into the compose box where you can make changes to the copy, uh, change any other media, say image or video, so it doesn't look the same. And then you can set it up again for publishing um, overnight or with the weekend. You can even switch this over to a different account. So if you want to select a different Twitter handle or Facebook page, you can say, we did well on this handle, let's publish it to another handle. You can also do that in bulk. So if you wanted to select, say, two of your top performing tweets or five, etc., you can recycle all of them at the same time with this recycle dropdown. You can also search by keyword. So if you need to look up a story you recently published, you can do that. And you have some of the same filter options here, searching by keyword. Also, your RSS feeds are listed here as a source of content. And sorting by date order can be really useful. Our default here is score order, so the highest scored stuff goes to the top. But you can also sort by date order. Now let's jump into the calendar view. So here at the top, sort of a sub-nav item, we have the calendar view. And once you click over to that, You'll see that we're basically laying out the, col the, the uh, queue, your content and your queue, and this calendar format. So it's a little bit easier to tell how much content you have per day or for the whole week. So you have the daily and the weekly option here. You can choose which handle you're looking at, this drop down. If you want to narrow down a particular source of content, only see what you have that week for uh, the sports feed or the celebrity feed, etc., that would be listed here. And post types, just meaning what's already published are optimized or scheduled. And down below you have the calendar. So here it's a little bit easier to see all the, the content that has already published, if there was a, a content queued up for later in the week, um, and then you can make plans and strategy around that if you need to create more content or, or publish a little less. Um, as I scroll down, let's see if there's some optimized content here. So each uh, item has a set of icons here on the left. So this was a publish now, it's already out, it's got a green check mark, so that's already published. This is optimized, so it hasn't published yet, there's no green check mark. And then one of the nice things we added, because this is a newer page for SocialFlow, if you click the eye, uh, eye icon, uh, you get another little preview area where you can preview the desktop and the mobile version of that tweet or post. Well, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your client service rep or email us at support at socialflow.com. Thanks for watching.